What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. In today's video, we're talking about how to make a thousand dollars a day pressure washing. I got Mike here with me. Mike, how's it going, man? Hey, Justin, it's going well. Are we also broadcasting on my channel? Yes, we're also on all about pressure washing and um, Quote IQ. So if you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, we're glad to have you. Uh, but like I said, in today's video, we're going to be breaking down step by step exactly how to make a thousand dollars a day in your pressure washing business. Uh, we're going to be going deep. We're going to do a Q&A at the end of this live. So if you guys hang around till the end, you can ask whatever questions you want. Please hold your questions until the end. Um, Mike, you want to share any thoughts about the thousand dollar day? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, people a lot of times when they are getting into any type of business, uh, there are goals, there are aspirations. And I think, uh, you know, we have to understand that there are baby steps. And just because you decide you're going to go into business doesn't mean that the first day of business, you're going to start making a thousand dollars a day. There are a lot of things that go into uh, getting to where you are able to start charging that much and, and, and making that much, if not more, right? We make way more than that every single day. And that's because we have spent a lot of time implementing the systems needed in order to achieve those goals. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the ways that, that are, you know, are going to help you get to the point where you're going to be making that much or more. Absolutely. Before we get into this one, as I mentioned, Q and a at the back end, have your questions, put them in the chat. If they're good questions, I'm going to save them uh, for the end. But before we get into that, we're giving away two MacBooks to two premium and platinum subscribers of Quote IQ in less than a week, March 23rd. Me and Mike are going to go live and we're going to pick these winners. Um, so if you haven't already, download Quote IQ to be the first link in the comment section and the description. And um, premium and platinum subscribers are entered to win. So if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments, you can do all that within the app for free. The premium subscription allows you a bunch of other features that you guys can try as well as uh, you get access to the web version of um quote iq and if you guys want to check out the web version check out my quote iq.com dot com okay, man sweet. we got some before we even start like i'm like the last couple days have been i mean we've we've got a lot of great stuff in in quote iq that uh we're gonna be hopefully we're gonna, pushing. we're gonna go live next week and tell you guys all the new updates i think like the last live we did we went over everything that we had in there that was new and then we have a whole new batch of newness right mike oh the newness is overwhelming and it's great it's like we're building every single week we're taking your guys's feedback making tweaks making it better and it's just yeah. a, it's the evolution very uh, cool you guys should do in your business so with that being said as i mentioned q a end of the end of the presentation we're going to run through all the steps you guys need to take in order to make a thousand dollars a day in your pressure washing business First and foremost, Mike, let's talk about backwards engineering a thousand dollar day. I think too often people have a goal and they just start going after it and they never really backwards engineer to figure out what they need to do in order to accomplish it. So if we were to backwards engineer a thousand dollar day, we could do a roof wash, one roof wash for a thousand dollars, two house washes for five hundred dollars each, or you could do four driveway cleanings for two fifty each. So kind of speak about in your business, Mike, I guess what is uh, normal or how would you backwards engineer a thousand dollar day? We, well, we had a list. What was step one? Step one is to backwards engineer because everything else is going to fall in line with that. So, right. So I, and I, you know, obviously backward engineering from a price standpoint is, is, is key because if you don't have, you know, a target in mind, then it's really hard to assess pricing based on what your capabilities are. You also have to understand that we're, we've got a limited amount of time per day, right? There are X amount of working hours per day. The homeowner doesn't want you, you know, at their property at 6 a.m. You're going to disturb them. You're going to disturb their neighbors. Uh, they probably don't want you there much after, you know, 5, 6 p.m. because they're done with their day. They want to get on. They don't want to be disturbed. So like I said, you've got, uh, you know, a finite amount of time during the day, which you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. So you have to understand, and we're going to get into this, a lot of components that are going to allow you to determine the things that you need to do in order to achieve that monetary goal, whether it's $1,000 or it's $1,500 or it's $2,000 a day. It's really dependent on a lot of things. Your market is one thing. Uh, some people can get, you know, for, a, you know, a 5,000 square foot house, maybe they're going to get twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a day. Um, or, uh, you know, somebody with that same uh, <clears throat> sized house can only get 350 or $400 for that house. So there's a lot of components. There's a lot of factors that come into this. So we're going to talk about the things that you can do in your business that are going to help you understand how to get there. 
Okay, so the reason why we wanted to backwards engineer first, you guys, was for this particular reason. If you're able to visualize the fact that you only need one roof wash to make the $1,000 or it takes two house washes or four driveway cleanings, we can then factor that into our marketing. We can factor that into what equipment we need. We can factor that into how we're going to sell things. So the big the big idea here is to kind of visualize what that $1,000 looks like first and foremost, and then let's work backwards to figure out what we need to do in order to make that a reality. So step two is going to be to have the right equipment and um, to know what you're doing. So IE efficiency. So Mike, let's talk a little bit about equipment. Obviously, like if you didn't know that you needed to do roof washes, you wouldn't know that you need to have a soft wash system, right? Correct. Right. Uh, so there, there are, there are multiple things that we can talk about here. And one of the main things that I get when we go live is, can I start with a 2.5 gallon per minute machine? And the answer of course is yes, you can start with that. You can start with a scrub brush, a bucket and some bleach and a, and a garden hose, but you're not going to be as efficient. And if you want to achieve these goals, if you want to maximize dollars uh, for your time, then you're going to have to be as efficient as possible. A 2.5 gallon per minute is going to get the job done. Don't, there's no question about that. It's not going to get the job done as quickly as a four gallon per minute or an eight gallon or a 10 gallon per minute. The more efficient that you get because of your equipment is going to allow you to work a lot faster and be able to do a lot more <clears throat> any given day. So efficiency equates directly to the equipment that you have. So if you're able to invest in something other than just the bare minimum, uh, when you're first starting, that's going to allow you to do a couple things. It's going to allow you to be more efficient, but it's also going to allow you not to have to upgrade as quickly because I promise you, if you start, uh, you know, you're getting out there, you're getting jobs, you're using a 2.5 gallon per minute machine, you are going to see very quickly how inefficient that is, uh, especially when you get into surface cleaning. Imagine trying to do a giant driveway with a 2.5 gallon per minute machine. It's going to take you all day. And you're only, you know, your equipment doesn't dictate the price. The market and other components dictate the price. So if your competitors are going to do that same driveway for $500, right, but it's going to take them two hours and you can only charge $500 and it's going to take you 12 hours because of your equipment, like who's winning that game? The guy that's way more efficient that could get it done a lot faster and charge the same amount. He's making a lot more than you are. So equipment equates to efficiency and efficiency, therefore, uh, you know, allows you to or it's directly related to how much you're going to make and how uh, profitable you are in your business. Um, and a great point Justin made about the soft wash. Roof washing is highly profitable. You can charge a lot more for a roof cleaning than you can for a house wash in a lot of markets. And I'm talking broadly here. But you can't do a roof cleaning properly with a pressure washer, right? You're not going to be able to get a strong enough solution on the roof to do the job efficiently and effectively and perform to customers' expectations, right? Um, yes, you can throw a, a house wash strength mix on a roof and do that a dozen times. And hopefully it's going to kill that glowy oak caps of magma up there and, and it's going to look good, but you really need a soft wash pump. And in order to, you know, clean properly and be efficient uh, and, and be able to uh, charge what you need to be charging uh, to get the job done. Absolutely. So first and foremost, we know what we need to do, right? In order to make the thousand dollars a day. Secondly, we know what equipment we need. Now I would say that there's like a curve on equipment, right? So like the, in the beginning, the more money you spend on equipment, the higher return you're going to get, but eventually it kind of like shapes off to where you're not getting as high return. I think if you guys are looking to get some really great equipment that are going to help you to scale your business, definitely check out Southeast Softwash. I would recommend probably one of the trailers. Mike, as far as efficiency goes and getting things done as quickly as possible, would you recommend like a trailer for somebody who wants to get to this thousand dollar day as opposed to, you know, some other form of equipment? Well, I'm, I'm partial to trailers, right? We do have one of the Southeast Softwash big mega trailers and it's got, you know, the 24 volt pump, uh, softwash pump. It's got 12 volt, uh, <coughs> excuse me, softwash pumps. It's got eight gallon per minute machines. It's got all the tanks, the surfactants. It's got everything that you can need to be as efficient as possible. However, I know for a fact that there are guys that have skids that can go out there and absolutely crush and be just as efficient. Um, I think it's, I think it's really a, um, I think it's a, it's an opinion, not an opinion. I think it's really just a preference thing. Like I prefer trucks and trailers. A lot of guys prefer the skids because it's a lot more contained. It's, you know, I like to have a big water tank. So we're never having to wait for the water to fill up when we're doing uh, any kind of surface cleaning. So there are pros and cons to both. 
Uh, and again, I just think it's a personal preference, but you can't go wrong. But it all goes back to having good functional equipment that's purpose built uh, that allows you to function at a you know as as, as efficiently as possible. If you're you know dragging a, a pressure washer around a yard and you're fighting with hoses, you don't have hose reels. Uh, these are things that that can make you more efficient and. Not everybody can afford that right away. Uh, and that's why we want to reinvest back into our businesses. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, perfect. So step two uh, was partially about equipment. The other thing was know what you're doing. Okay, so if we know that we need one roof, wa roof wash a day to make $1,000, if you don't know how to clean a roof properly, you're not going to be able to do that, right? So you need the equipment in order to perform it. And then you need the know-how in order to do the job. If you guys want to check out how to wash, I'll leave it first thing in the comment section and the description. We go over the chemicals, how to use them, how to clean every service on a residential job site, property protection, job walkthroughs. Uh, we talk through equipment, how to build it out, things of that nature. So if you really want to get uh, the full scope of everything that you need to do and how to clean every surface, definitely check out how to wash. Like I said, that'll be linked in the comment section and the description of this video. Um, but... Let's move on to step three. So step one, backwards engineer. Step two is going to be having the right equipment and knowing what you're doing um, in order to perform those jobs. And then step three is going to be lead flow equals cash flow. So All right. Well, before we hop into that, because okay. you know we did talk about how to wash, right? Obviously, that's 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 our course, and uh, we think it's a phenomenal job. But all of the stuff within that course it goes back to uh, efficiency, right? Yes, you've got a good piece of equipment, and but that the, the piece of equipment is only as good as the guy that's using it, right? You can have a phenomenal rifle, but if you can't hit the side of a barn, what's the purpose of having that rifle? Uh, and it goes the same for your equipment. You can have the best equipment, but if you don't know how to mix the chemicals properly, then what good is that equipment? If you don't know what pressure to use, if you don't know how to clean vinyl, how to clean hardy board, how to clean stucco, how to clean drive it, how to clean any surface, right? Properly and efficiently with the right chemical ratios, then what are you going to do? You're going to get out there and you're going to waste a tremendous amount of time and energy in front of your customers, embarrassing yourself most likely. And, and I can say that because I've done that. Um, I've, I've not, I probably not talked about it recently, but one of the first times I, you know, I even attempted to clean a house, the chemical injector wasn't working and I left, I packed up and I, I left because I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know what was going wrong. Uh, but these are things that you can learn by yourself and it's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you money. And then it's going to take you longer to get to that thousand dollars per day. If you're just out there, you know, busting your knuckles and sweating and bleeding, trying to do it all by yourself because you're too prideful to say, you know what? I don't know everything. Um, I, I need help. And so education is probably one of the biggest keys to success in anything in your life, right? The smarter you are, the more adept you are to whatever it is that you're trying to do or trying to achieve, the better off you are in the long run. So that's it. Now let's talk about lead flow equals cash flow. Right. But as you guys can see, like efficiency plays a huge part. Like you wouldn't think, right? Like step two is efficiency. Oh, great. Like, yeah, I need the right equipment. I need to know what I'm doing. But like Mike said, one piece goes wrong. You don't know how to fix it. You're out for the whole day. You might be out for longer than that. Like you never know. Okay. So these pieces are very important. So efficiency, lead flow equals cash flow, right? When you want to get our tentacles in as many different places as possible to bring in as many leads as possible. Mike, let's talk about the kind of lead flow that you like to have in your business. Yeah. Well, obviously having bountiful lead flow is what everybody wants to achieve. And we get that just like Justin said, is you cast a wide net, right? Like if you're out there and you're just, you've got a fishing pole and you're throwing it out in the pond and you're hoping to catch a fish. Yeah, that's great. You're going to catch a fish. But if you've got a net and you cast that net out, you drag it in. Now you've got a ton of fish and then you're eating healthy and you're, you're, you're in a great spot. So that equates, again, directly back to your, uh, your, your lead flow. And so you need to have long-term goals. You need to have short-term goals. You need to be doing Facebook advertising. You need to be having your Google presence, uh, you know, working on that every single day. You got to have a website. Your SEO has got to be kicking in. So when people Google whatever service it is that you're offering, your company is popping and people are calling you first, or you're at least up at the top because that's who gets called first. If you're not up at the top, spend a couple bucks, run some ads on Google, uh, go door to door, right? That's cheap. That's free. 
if you don't have a job to do, get out there and find work, right? Uh, flyers work, postcards work, bandit signs work, uh, email marketing, go and harvest as many emails as you can. Word of mouth, ask everybody that you know to talk about your business, to tell their friends about your business, right? These are all ways that you can get lead flow coming in. So then you're not worried so much about where the next job is coming. You're worried about how you're going to get everything done you know, and that's, that's where we want to be. So you have to have both short-term and long-term, you know, strategies. And like I said, you know, the door knocking, the, uh, the postcards, the flyers, the bandit signs, all short-term, your GMB, your Google, my business, or whatever they're calling it now, you have to be actively working on that every single day, posting pictures, getting reviews, being, you know, being somebody that looks like a professional, uh, site or uh what was it a go you know your google it doesn't look like some you know joe schmo who doesn't have any content there because people do look at that they do look at reviews these are very important things to do and that's your long-term strategy so right things i want to kind of summarize what mike said a little bit um just as far as like the progression of things right if we start with the inner circle first if we start with friends family people that we know love and trust we then work outwards from there and so like Dick said something about door knocking, okay? Towards the outer circle, you're going to have like things like Google, things that like websites, things that take longer to get going, but when they do, they have higher and higher returns. So for Mike's business, for example, at this point, door to door really wouldn't be that beneficial for him because he's already has more work than what he can take in. And that's coming from free lead sources such as Google, right, Mike? Yep. So focus on in the beginning using sweat equity. And then over time, we want to leverage the internet in ways like Facebook ads, Google, Google ads, things like that. Um, but you will outgrow these things. One of the benefits to high lead flow within your business, as well as you're able to charge more, you're able to pick and choose what jobs you do. You're able to, you know, Mike, talk about some of the freedoms that you're offered whenever you have more leads coming in than what you could actually service. With the benefits of that? Yeah. Well, the benefits of that is you then get to decide how much you're going to charge, who you want to work for, right? How you're going to fill up your day, how you're going to fill up your schedule. And this gets right back to getting to that thousand dollar day. If you don't have a lot of leads and you give out a couple quotes, <clears throat> excuse me, and say, you know, three of them are like, yeah, uh, that's great. Um, but I can only spend $250 or $200 or whatever the case is. And you're like, you know what? I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take those jobs. I'm going to get a little experience. I'm going to try to make a little bit of money, try to get more efficient, right? But that's $600 in a day. That's nowhere near your $1,000 mark. But if you've got 15 people, 10 people calling you, and they are all saying, yes, you know, we want to work well, or we want you to do the job. That's when you can start raising your prices because as the lead flow increases, so do your prices because you're basically eliminating the types of jobs and the types of customers that you don't want to work for. And that's, those are the tire kickers and the people that, that don't really see the value in what you're offering and are unwilling to pay you for what you're uh, providing, right? And that was one of the things that I struggled with for many years early on was understanding that people are willing to pay you just have to find those people and you find those people by, you know, increasing your lead flow. And then you can kind of select who you want to work for. Uh, and, and you do that based on your pricing. So that is one of the key factors, in my opinion, on the benefits of having significant lead flow is you're going to be able to determine the types of jobs that you want. Like we were talking about, do you want to do four or five, $200 jobs, or you do you want to do one roof wash for a thousand bucks, or do you want to do two houses? I mean, these are things that you uh, need to think about when, you know, and, and it goes back to your lead flow. I want to say this is an example because just this week we were reminded how beneficial it is to have lead flow. We had a customer that um, called in. Obviously, they were kind of price shopping, but they ended up going with us. And it wasn't a, a good situation for us. When we pulled up to the house, they didn't have furniture moved. They had like, you know, um, clothes all draped along the fence line. And it was just like, we have three other jobs to do or two other jobs to do for this day. There are bigger jobs. Are we really going to put up with this? Are we really going to move this customer's furniture? Are we really going to communicate with them that we're going to have to have an upcharge to move this? And we just, we didn't end up doing the job. We ended up leaving. The other thing is they needed it done this week. And because we were booked out, we were able to charge more money because if we have to inconvenience another client or move another client on the schedule, then we're going to, we're going to charge more money for somebody that we have to do that for. So two different situations where we're able to charge more money because we're booked out already and we're able to pass up on jobs that we don't necessarily want because it doesn't, you know, work for our company as well. So two benefits to having a lot of lead flow uh, within your business. So step number one, 
I'll recap towards the end. Let's go on to step number four. If you guys have any questions, make sure you're leaving them in the chat. We are going to do um, Q&A towards the end of this video. Austin says, Justin and Mike, please answer my question. I have it starred. We're going to we're gonna go into your question uh, here. So at the everybody end. that's asked a question, and I've seen some good ones and the ones that I definitely want to address. So at the right. end of this, we will be addressing all those. So you, so you guys stay till the end, and we'll answer your questions. Right. Number three is lead flow equals cash flow. Number four is knowing your costs and charging accordingly. Okay. So we could probably address somebody's question with this because somebody was asking, do you think I should be um, charging market price even though I'm 17 and don't look like I have a lot of experience? Okay. So for Francisco, he might not have the same cost as what Mike has, right? As well as he might not have the same experience that Mike has. It's probably better that Francisco charges a little bit less than what Mike does, honestly. But Mike, let's talk about knowing your costs and then charging accordingly. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I completely disagree with that, uh, with Francisco. But um, you have to understand your costs. And I also want to say that when we say, you know, making $1,000 a day, um, there, there are two things to consider, and that's your profit and your gross revenue, right? Profit is everything after your costs. Uh, that is, that is it. so then you have to ask yourself, okay, do I want to make $1,000 before? Or, you know, obviously you want to make $1,000 after. But so when we're talking about this, um, it doesn't really matter at this point whether it's a profit or it's um, your, your gross revenue, because if you don't know your costs, then you have no idea what either of those things are going to be. So that's why it's so important that we understand our costs, right? And if you guys have watched my channel, you've watched Justin's channel, then you understand that, <coughs> excuse me, these are such important things to understand. Your cost essentially is... Um, all of your overhead, right? So your overhead is your rent, your car payment, your truck payment, what's your chemical cost, your gas, uh, all of these things, uh, your, your surface cleaner, uh, the tips that you're putting on, your couplings, everything that, you, everything that it takes to run your business, your telephone, your website, all of your marketing, everything that you're spending in your business is overhead. And then you take your overhead uh, and this is how you understand what you need to charge. You have to understand all of those things. So then you can determine what your average hourly rate is. Uh, and there's a calculation that you can do to, to figure all of that out. But everybody's business is different. And that's why it's so difficult for us to, to sit here and say, oh yeah, you need to charge this or you need to charge that uh, for this or that. Because we don't know what your overhead are. We don't know what your cost structure is in your business. And that's going to help the determine what you charge and also, you know, how you can determine if you're profitable or not. If you're not covering your overhead, then you're just breaking even. And there's absolutely no reason to even be out working if you're not even making a profit, right? You could be spending your time doing other things that are going to help generate business that are going to make you more efficient, that are going to allow you to get out there and be profitable at one point. But we don't want to work for nothing. So you have to understand your cost structure. And if you're not keeping track of all of your data, all of your expenditures, then you're just kind of flying, you know, by the seat of your pants and you're not running a business. You're just out there kind of winging it. And that's not where you want to be. So uh, understanding your cost is the first step. So I kind of went off on a tangent. If there, you but. guys need help keeping up with uh, your costs as well as profit and loss statements, all these kind of different things, check out Quote IQ. We built a cost calculator within there so that way you could literally have a list out of all your costs as well as calculate what your break even point per hour is. And then you can even enter in a profit margin above that and say, okay, I want to make 50%. You, then it gives you an hourly rate price. So if you need help keeping up with costs, Check out the cost calculator within Quote IQ. If you need help, even knowing what the profit and loss statement is, keeping up with expenses, all these kind of things that Mike is talking about to legitim legitimize your business. Otherwise, it's just a side hustle. It's just something you're doing on the side. It's a side gig. Definitely check out Quote IQ. Um, so, Mike, okay, knowing your costs and charging accordingly, uh, incredibly beneficial. So, I kind of want to get into this comment right now, though, with with regards to Francisco. Okay, so you got a guy that's 17 versus a guy who's been in business for longer than he's been alive. Okay. Are these two companies, do they need to charge the same amount? There are, there are, there are multiple schools of thought on this. Um, there is a market price, right? Like in, in my market, you know, there's kind of a, 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 a cap on what you can charge, right? Like people are people, regardless of who they are, they might say, okay, that sounds a little expensive. I'm going to call somebody else because I think it's just highway robbery. Um, oh, but if, I want to say this, Mike, if I can, I want, I, I, I thinking about this, 
I think the two customers are completely different, okay? Customer that goes with Mike's company is searching on Google. They're ready to make a purchasing decision now. They want the cost. They want the price as quick as possible, and they just want to get the job done. Somebody that goes with Francisco may be more of, you know, somebody wants to give a young guy an opportunity. But his question was, just because I'm 17 years old, right? I don't care how old you are. You could be a 50-year-old man that's just starting out, right? Right. Francisco's question is about age. It's not about experience or anything else. But um, I think those have to be taken into consideration though, right? Francisco has no overhead with regards to cost. We don't know. I mean, Francisco's got a machine. He's got gas. He's got bleach. He's got equipment. Hopefully he's doing a little bit of marketing to get the phone ringing so people can call him. And when they call him, they don't know that he's 17. They don't know how much experience he has. So if he goes out there and he's like, yeah, I'm going to do that driveway for $75 and I'm going to charge $225, then shame on Francisco because he's undercutting the market. He's undervaluing himself and the service that he is providing. This is, this is the thing that bothers me so much all the time when people talk about this is, well, I'm just starting out. I'm going to charge less. No, because then that customer is grandfathered into these cheap ass prices that you don't want to stick with. I did that. I was charging $150 for a 2000 square foot house for many years. Oh yeah, just, it's going to be 150 bucks. Now that's a $300 job every single day. And we close them nonstop. And it has nothing to do with me being old and me being in business. People just Google us. They find us. I give them a price and that's Francisco value yourself, understand your market. So Figure out what your competitors are doing. Get a baseline for what to charge and don't undercut them just because of your, are you going to do a good job? Does your age prevent you from doing a good job? Absolutely not. Um, does your uh, experience prevent you from providing a good service? Absolutely not. <clears throat> so I think don't ever let age or experience dictate pricing. I will say one thing that can dictate Francisco's pricing. If he's new to the market and doesn't have a ton of customers, the more customers you have, the, the higher you can charge. The yes. less customers you have, the less you can charge because you don't want to lose out on those opportunities. So we have two, two things that are kind of balancing here, right? Mike must charge higher because he has more, he has employees. He's got bigger equipment. He's got a lot more costs. But also Mike has a lot more lead flow than maybe Francisco has. And I guess we're making assumptions. All things equal, if Francisco has the same equipment and employees as Mike and he's getting the same lead flow, obviously he should have the same price. But right. I, I just the question, maybe it was the way that he worded it. Should I be charging market price? Absolutely. Charge a market price. Don't undercut the market. Because you know what's going to happen? If you start undercutting the market, you're not going to be in business very long. And I hate to say this and insult people, but most guys in this business aren't very smart. They're not, and they're not charging what they should or could charge. And that's why we see such churn in this market. And if you don't know what churn is, that means, oh, people are going out of business all the time because they're stupid, because they're not doing the right things. They're not listening to us. They're not doing their research. They're not charging accordingly. And when you don't charge accordingly, you go out of business. So don't be stupid. Be smart. Charge accordingly. Charge as much as you can possibly charge. You can always back down on your price. Hey, look, there, this is a pretty complex question, but step number four, know your costs, charge accordingly, okay? Step, step number five is going to be selling. Become good at the selling process, looking for every opportunity to increase your, increase your average ticket price, cross-selling, upselling, and everything else in between. So we actually have a really good question that somebody, and if you guys keep putting questions in the chat, we're going to do Q&A at the end of this. Um, how do you upsell stain removal while remote quoting uh, and the customer's not home whenever you're washing. I mean, that's, that's a great question. Yeah. So this one kind of falls in line with cross-selling, upselling, and looking for every opportunity to increase um, the average ticket price. So, my right. and so, yeah. So stains are not something that, okay, stains are going to be a separate charge anyway, right? And I'm not talking organic stains, organic stains, mold, mildew, um, Glowio caps of magma on the roof, things of that nature are all included in our house wash, right? Those are included in our driveway cleaning. Now, if you've got severe oil stains, if you've got rust stains, that's an additional charge. Now, if I'm quoting remotely, I might not know about that. But when we do get on site and we do notice that there are things outside of the realm or the scope of work, which we quoted, and 
in my quotes, I say uh, the removal of all surface pollutants and any organic material, right? I make it very clear. They might not understand that, but at least I can explain it to them if they do question it. So if we roll up and there's a huge oil stain, right? Just and, and we clean the driveway, everything else looks great except this giant oil stain. Well, that's I've already got their contact information, right? We've put it into our CRM. Hopefully you're using Quote IQ. So you can do a couple of things. You can pull out your, you know, your pre-inspection form that you did, which is, uh, you know, obviously available in Quote IQ. You can uh, take pictures of the oil stains, the rust stains, and send it to the customer and say, hey, here's your pre-inspection form. We, did you want us to take care of your oil stains or your rust stains while we're here? Uh, and if, you, if so, it's going to cost X dollars to take care of that. Now, the, the most likely they're going to be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Please take care of that. Oh, that you're not going to do that while you're there. It's not included. Well, no, it's, you know, obviously it's going to take a different set of chemicals. It takes a little bit longer. Uh, we didn't take that into account when we quoted. And so these are things, this is just getting a little bit more comfortable with your selling uh, when you're out there talking to your customers with, uh, you know, upselling and cross-selling various things. Uh, but please never throw stuff in for free. I mean, little stuff. Yeah. The, I, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of that going a little bit extra, but when it comes to, uh, extra services, do not do that for free. Don't just throw it in because they think that it should be, it shouldn't be. So that's, that's how I would, uh, deal with remote quoting. And, you know, if the customer isn't home, text them, send them an email, uh, just, you know, it, it's super easy. We've got amazing technology at our fingertips that we can use to do this. And that's one of the benefits of the 28 point inspection within um, Quota Q currently. You get Mike's exact inspection form that he uses, all the same questions, everything. And as you are going through the uh, form or your technician is going through the form, you can look for those upsell opportunities. Send the customer the form. Hey, I just want to let you know of any pre existing damages at your property. We noticed XYZ. Exactly what Mike said. It's a great. And here are some pictures. We, we, you know, on that on that inspection form, it gives you the opportunity to take a picture with every point, as well as you know, at the end of you know the form, you can just add pictures of your upsells, send it on to the customer, and uh, increase that average ticket price. The other beautiful thing is it's stored within the app forever. So if you ever need to, you know, go back or a customer after the fact says, "Hey, X Y Z happened," you can always refer back to the twenty eight point inspection that you filled right. out. So. Basically, step number five is maximizing on selling. Just as a guy uh, asked about uh, the chemical uh, upsells for stain removal, we just want to know things that we could cross sell and upsell to, things like driveways, roofs, any other services that we provide, right? Mike, raising the average ticket price as much as possible. And that's why one question is that I always ask whenever I get a customer come through, hey, were you interested in, you know, if they come through on a house wash, were you interested in getting the driveway cleaned or the roof wash, right? I know you do the exact same thing. Yeah, every single call, we're always asking if they want to add something on or multiple things. And and then, you know, in your, your email sequences that lead up to it, if they've not, and e even if you don't have sequences in place, um, just hit them with a text the day before, hey, if you had a chance to walk around the property, uh, let us know if there was anything else you wanted to take care of, you know, because we've got a couple extra, you know, we've got a couple extra hours if, you know, you wanted to add on your driveway, your patio, your fence, if you wanted an exterior window cleaning, whatever the case is, right? Um, I think it's great to, uh, I think it's great to, uh, constantly increase that average ticket price because again, I would rather pull up, set up, do a job, whatever, however many services, and then break down, you know, twice a day rather than three or four times a day, because that time you're not getting compensated for. Yes. You're going to, you know, try to build it into your pricing, but at the end of the day, windshield time and set up and breakdown time, you know, those are not highly profitable times that you're spending. So if you can uh, minimize that time, then you're maximizing the time that you're actually earning. So again, helping you get to that, that goal of a thousand dollars or more per day. Exactly. And you're maximizing on every single customer that comes to the door. And ultimately that's the most important because you have a customer acquisition cost and the more money we can get on that average ticket price up, it's going to help us get to closer to that thousand dollar mark. And essentially the goal is, is what's the least amount of jobs that we could do every day to get to that thousand dollar mark. So selling is an, an integral part. Let's get into step six and that's going to be repetitions and systems to get better at everything. Okay. So one of the big things that I want to mention is a lot of guys come in and they say, Hey, I got this huge lead. It's my first, um, apartment complex or my first, um, you know, what are those little mini mall things? Like, you know, they want me to clean the whole thing, yada, yada, yada. It's all about going out and doing a lot of these different quotes so that we can get comfortable with this quoting process. 
the selling process, the putting the quote together, the presenting your business. There's a, there's a lot of repetition that needs to go into place for you to get good at these things so you can land these types of jobs. Not to mention going out and doing the job. You get the work experience. You could refer back to jobs that you've done previously. Um, so repetition and building systems to get better at everything is an integral part. Mike, what kind of uh, systems have you built into place to help you get to the thousand dollar a day mark? Well, we've got all kinds of systems in place. And and I think some of the key factors is like I was talking about earlier is you've got limited amount of time during the day uh, to maximize how much you can make, right? Like, like I said, we've got X amount of hours in a day. So we want to, we want to be earning all of those uh, hours and by minimizing the trivial tasks that are time consuming throughout the day, you know, um, it, quoting is a prime example. If you can put in place something that allows you to quote remotely, get back to the customer almost instantly. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the truck, if you're on the job, you know, and you see you get a call come through, well, you need to be the first guy to respond to that call and get back to the customer because the guy that gets back to the customer first is usually the one that gets the job. And we all know that we all want that job. So we have to be as quick and efficient as possible uh, when we're returning customers calls, getting back with quotes and estimates. So if you're able to quote remotely, that's a great way to, to, you know, do that. Um, I don't know. Uh, what else, Justin? Well, just like with regards to you can imagine somebody doing their first job versus somebody who's done a thousand, right? They are going to have so many more steps in place in order to um, do the job. They're going to have so many steps within with regards to the whole quoting process and everything else. So with regards to repeti repetition and building systems in place, you want to make sure that you're doing these things on a daily basis. You're being consistent with your marketing. You're being consistent with the way you're quoting people. You're You're studying the way that you're quoting and that you're talking to customers and and you want to develop the systems like Mike's mentioned, remote quoting. Uh, people in here ask about remote quoting. You want to get better at you know how you're quoting those jobs, making sure you're never like underbidding, better at cross-selling. Essentially, step six is just doing all the steps every single day and being cognizant of the things you could do better in order to get a better return. So, um, Mike, do you want to add anything onto this, or can I go through the? I want to go through everything. It's kind of like <laughs> no. I, I mean, I just I think that you know the repetition and in, in absolutely everything, including selling, right? Selling is an uncomfortable thing to a lot of people. And so repetition in selling is going to make you that much better, right? It's going to allow you to get more comfortable the more that you do it. It's just like out on the job. The more you do each individual task, you're going to get more efficient. You're going to get better at it. So every single day, you have to be working on yourself, on your business, on your systems, even little things like how efficiently you're rolling up your hoses, uh, how efficiently you're setting up, you're doing your 28 point inspection prior to the way you're interacting with your customers, not to get your time wasted, but still, you know, have that, that personable uh, experience for them. Like there are all kinds of things uh, as your business grows, as you're in it longer, you're going to get so much better with each day. Uh, but it all comes from repetition and continually working on yourself your business and your systems. So let's let's do a recap, I guess. Absolutely. So recap. Step number one is going to be backwards engineer the thousand dollar day. We need to know exactly what we need to be doing every single day in order to achieve whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish. Step two is going to be have the right equipment and know what you're doing. Okay. So we know that one roof washer day is going to make us a thousand dollars. Obviously, we want to have the equipment in order to perform that service. And we want to know the processes that go along with being efficient at performing it. So that way it doesn't take us the whole day to perform the cleaning. Step number three is going to be lead flow equals cash flow the more lead flow we get into our business um the more ultimately money that we can make because we can do things like cross sell upsell we can charge more we can pick who we work for things of that nature we want to start from the center from our inner circle and work our way out um and we want to ultimately build those lead flows that are going to bring more consistent um people into our business like things like google step four is going to be knowing your cost and charging accordingly as we went through um these things can be different for different people. You might live in a different area. You might have different costs. So know your costs and charging cord charge accordingly. Also, if you don't know your costs, you don't know what you're making, you don't know what you're spending, you don't really have a business, you have a side hustle. So download Quote IQ and keep track of those things. Step five is going to be selling. We want to make sure that we're cross-selling, upselling, and we want to take every single opportunity that we can in order to make the, mo the most amount of money on every single customer. So that way, you know, we're doing less jobs to get to that $1,000. And then and last... 
Let, let me break in on the marketing piece. Yep. One of the things that, you know, we talk about how to wash, we talk about the inner circle, we talk about quote IQ. One thing that we very seldom talk about, and, and I think it's a disservice to the folks that are watching, is we have a place called the resource page, right? And we call it the resource page because it is a phenomenal resource for guys that are out there that need help, right? They, they, they know that they don't know everything. And so this is a place where you can go and, and just, it's called the resource page, it's pwcourse.com, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, at pwcourse.com, you have every single one of our training courses, right? Everything, and, and it gives a, you know, just a breakdown on, on everything that you're going to get, like how to wash. It's over six hours long. It covers everything from equipment to the chemicals, right? Everything, but how to get more customers. That's where kind of where I was going here. Um, that's our marketing course. And this is taking everything that I've done over the past 21 years uh, and, and, thrown out all the stuff that didn't work. And trust me, there was a lot of stuff that I did wrong uh, and giving you guys the things that actually move the needle in your business that are going to allow you to maximize every aspect of your marketing. So you can start getting that lead flow. And you heard us talk about it before lead flow equals cash flow. This is 399 bucks. You can use promo code uh, 50 free, get $50 off. And you're going to get everything that works for generating business in a service business. This isn't just for pressure washing. It's for anything, but we've got all kinds of things like the ad strategy, local domination, um, how to build a soft wash system. People are asking all the time, how do I do this? How do I do that? Well, Cody Yarborough from Southeast soft wash put together this course and he walks you through the plumbing, the electrical side, uh, everything that you need to know in order to properly build a professional, um, soft wash skid, uh, the solar panel, how to quote, how to scale the next level, all kinds of things. And if you go down further, Justin, we've got all kinds of other things. Someone was asking about a customer contract. Yes, we've got a customer contract. One of our attorneys uh, put it together and it, you know, it costs like seven, $800 to have that done, but you can get it for like next to nothing. We've got before and after pictures, roof washing, explainer videos. We've got all kinds of stuff. And am I selling you right now? Absolutely. I'm selling you. I want you to go to pwcourse.com. I want you to look at this stuff. I want you to buy this stuff. And if you don't like that, I'm selling you then unsubscribe. Don't watch my channel, Justin. I'm not going to tell them to unsubscribe from you, but uh, if you're not selling in your business, then you're wrong. And if I'm not selling in my business, I'm wrong. So if you don't like what I'm doing, then you're doing something wrong because you should be selling. You should be cross selling. You should be upselling. And that's how you get to a thousand dollars a day. Boom. Okay, sweet. Let's finish the recap. Step number six is going to be repetition and uh, putting in the systems in place to get better at everything. So like I said, the guy who does the first job versus the guy who does his thousand, thousandth job, the guy who quotes his first job versus the guy who quotes a thousand jobs, it's a completely uh, different game. So a lot of different steps you guys can take to get to a thousand dollars. I think we provided a bunch of value. Let's go through some questions because there was a bunch of questions uh, on this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section. We're going to try to get to as many as we can. Um, Let's see what we got. Okay. Is this the same guy? I think it is. Austin Holt, who is very adamant that we answer his question. I'm 17 and started my pressure washing business. I've done about five places, but wondering if I should go door to door or what to get more customers. Sure. Yes, go door to door. Go to door to door. Door to door is a great place to start. So many ways that you can get your business out in front of more people, Austin. I just did a I just did a um a business launch, if you will, for my brother, and uh, I posted from my account to Facebook and let everybody know that he had just started his business. He was doing a, a deal for his first couple customers that he got. You could get mom and dad to do that. And literally everybody typically has like between, you know, 500 and 1500 friends on Facebook. And you could probably get four or five jobs just like that. If you go into uh, Facebook groups, you can post in there every day asking for people that need work done. Do the Next same. door, Austin, Next door. 17 years old, probably don't have a lot of capital to, to capital to spend on advertising go to the next door for your neighborhood or your area and just start interacting. You can, you can run ads there as well. Um, but you can also just go and respond to anybody that's ever talked about pressure washing, bump it to the top and uh, your company name is going to be out there. So I think that there are a lot of great ways for younger folks or, or anybody to get their name out there just starting out and, you know, asking everybody that you know to tell everybody that they know um, would be great. Maybe sending everybody that you know an email and then asking them to forward it to everybody that they know, right? It's kind of like a web, a spider web, and, and you just kind of just keep going out like that. And the more, the more people that are talking, the better it is.
So just remember, eyes equals dollars. The more people you get in front of, uh, the more money that you're ultimately gonna make. Gonna make. Don't box yourself in either. Like you know, he's like, I'm 17. I want to start a pressure washing business. Okay, great. Just because you want to start doesn't mean that customers are gonna come to you. Ask the market what they need. If you went into Facebook groups every day and you said, Hey, I'm looking to do some side jobs for some people. What kind of side jobs do you guys need done? You'd have people saying, Hey, I need help putting this together. Hey, I need help hauling this off, or I need this or that. And you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. Just to kind of get yourself underway, you can get yourself in front of customers that you wouldn't have gotten in front of otherwise. So don't necessarily box yourself in, big guy. Um, okay, let's keep it going. We got a bunch of other ones. Let's see. Hey, Mike, uh, can I use a Walmart pressure washer? I don't know where beginner. that's at. Are you at the, I was starting at the top, Mike. Yeah, me too. This was right under Austin. Okay, let me see. Hold on two seconds. Austin. Dang, Cody hit us with a super chat. Come oh, on. Man. Thanks, okay, Cody. super chats take precedent, so we have to look at the Cody super chat real quick. Hey, if uh, anybody's interested in buying the best equipment, Southeast Soft Wash, dude, that's what I was telling you about yesterday. Dude, shout out Cody Q to a major national franchise company, nine figure a year business and the service industry. They were blown away. How cool is that, man? Big shout out to Cody at Southeast Soft Wash. Y'all go to southeastsoftwash.com right now and go buy some surfactants. Go buy some uh, degrees. They have got the best tall reach tips in the industry. They've got the best. Uh, if, if you are looking for a specialty chemical to upsell, and this is actually ties directly back into getting to that uh, higher ticket you know, price, you need to be prepared. And this goes back to, I mean, basically everything what, that we've talked about, you need to know how to use these chemicals. Cody goes over this and how to wash, uh, but you need to have the right chemicals uh, in order to you know, remove efflorescence, remove grease oil and you know grease stains red clay uh what else there's all kinds of different so, products that they've got over there can you see uh, this right here mike look at this yeah, look at that. If, if you guys go to southeastsoftwash.com you can go hover over chemicals and then you can literally see all the chemicals he's got degreasers what are degreasers good for for removing oil stains efflorescence removal gutter cleaning uh bleach neutralizers red clay stains these are all just upsells for you and your business rust stain removal graffiti removal and you guys can come in here he's got all kind of good stuff he's got trainings in here he's got parts and all kind of just great stuff they got the batch buster so and then they even made it on the website to where you can buy one um gallon at a time now yep or you can get you know four different uh things and they stick it in one box and they ship it to you now also you know one of the things that i hear guys talk about all the time and and people in this industry are notoriously cheap, right? Trying to find the easiest way out. Oh, I'm just going to use some Dawn detergent. I'm just going to use some, some dishwasher soap. Okay, that's cool. And if that was the right way to do it, then everybody, everybody would be doing it. It doesn't work. It's not as good. Uh, these things are designed specifically uh, for us so we can make more money. And it's just like when people complain about a 12-volt pump that goes out after three or four months. Okay, how much did that pump make you? It made you tens of thousands of dollars if you're doing it right. So replacing a $120 pump every couple months is a penny in the bucket, right? And so don't come to me and say, oh, their they're they're, they're, uh, detergents are so expensive. Well, they're not because you get a gallon, you dilute it, and then you go and you make... 10x what you spent, right? It's all about a return on your investment, just like with your marketing dollars. Invest in yourself, invest in the right equipment, invest in the right tools, invest in the right detergents so you can go out there and be the most efficient that you can possibly be and maximize your dollars. And you charge accordingly. Boom. Thank you, Cody. We appreciate the super chat. Okay, let me come. You said it was under Austin's comment, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey Mike, okay, I got it here. Hey Mike, can I use a Walmart power washer as a beginner? Right, you can use, like I've said before, you can use anything as a beginner. Um, and you know, we're, we're, whether you get it at Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's, one of the things that you need to really remember is that what you're buying at the big box stores and what you're buying at Walmart that is a homeowner's product, right? That is not a professional piece of equipment that is intended to be used every single day, five days a week. It's intended to be used once or twice, maybe three times a year. It is not going to last. But yes, you can start with it, but just be prepared. It's not going to be as efficient, and it's probably going to shit out on you pretty soon uh, if you use it continually. And somebody else said right under there, I mean, what's he okay, saying? Okay, wait. We have to interrupt this uh, broadcast for an uh, announcement. We're giving away two MacBook computers in less than a week, March 23rd, if you guys want to win. Uh, become a subscriber of Quota Q Premier Platinum subscriber. You get all the features, you get everything, and you get the opportunity to win 
two MacBooks. That's and you guys right. are really going to want to see what our next giveaway is because it's going to be Oh, crazy. it's crazy. But um, And then okay, somebody so else says, yeah, you can absolutely do it. It says, I've got a steel uh, 2.7. He wants a bigger machine because he started smaller. And then another guy goes, I mean, I don't think where you get it matters. It's more the brand. And I don't even, I don't even think it's the brand, right? Because like, what's a brand of pressure washer? I, I would be, I would venture like, I know Southeast soft wash. I know like pressure pros. Uh, they've got Southeast has got the crack in pressure washer. We've got a couple of those. Um, but everybody uses the same pumps. They use the same engines and it's just, uh, they're just components that are being assembled. So get quality stuff. Like if you go to Harbor Freight and buy a Harbor Freight um, or, a, you know, like a Northern Tool pressure washer that's got like a Chinese or a Korean motor and some off-brand pump, you're going to have issues. And when things do go wrong, who's going to support you on that? Where are you going to get a Chinese pump replacement? You're not. Uh, so I would say, look at, you know, the engine brand and then the pump brand, not necessarily who's assembling it. And, but you do want to have a reputable assembler as well. Beautiful. But get started with whatever you got. That was the big takeaway there. Um, I don't even know how to say this guy's name. He says, hey, fellas, I'm on the verge of jumping in here in California. I'm laying down the groundwork, researching, selling things for funding, watching everything power wash. Got to say, got to stay away from the naysayers. Absolutely. Yeah. Good I luck that to you. Um, okay, let's keep it moving. Let me see. Oh, here's, I think it's a good one. Um, I don't know. Maybe mention is bundle your service. One maybe mention is bundle your service. And that's upselling, cross-selling. He had said that prior to us talking about that. I saw that pop up. And right. and and he's this is a great uh point. You always want to add additional services, you always want to bundle services, whether that's pre-quote where you're giving customers the options, Justin, we or love you're providing packages. Right, um, right, 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 right. And those are some things if you tune in next week for quote IQ you'll learn what we're doing next. So I just gave you guys a hint of two things that are coming in the next update. But yes, packages, giving customers options, allowing them to select, but also doing it on site is going to make your business a lot more profitable. The other thing is, one other thing to add on to this is low ticket services will get your foot in the door with customers and you can leverage them into higher tickets as well. So if you're having trouble landing the $1,000 roof wash, bring it down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Market some driveway cleanings. Market some house washes. If you're still having problems, there might be another low-ticket service that you can offer to even get your foot in the door as well. Gutter cleaning. Gutter uh, cleaning. Right? I know a lot of guys will offer gutter cleaning. Justin, I think you talked about that at some point. You I did. Uh, I offered can cleaning for a little while. I also uh, did landscaping for a while because I could literally throw a rock and hit about five people that needed their beds redone. So... Just leverage what you got. At the, in the beginning, for me, landscaping jobs were so much easier to land than pressure washing jobs. I enjoyed pressure washing more, but I was getting landscaping jobs easier. So I was doing the landscaping jobs, and while I was there, I would say, hey, we also offer XYZ services if you guys need anything. And I was able to turn some of those customers into pressure washing customers. But the thing is, though, the biggest thing for you guys, especially beginners, keep in mind what the market wants. Just because you want to start a pressure washing business and you want to offer pressure washing within your area doesn't necessarily mean that there's a huge demand. Doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to jump all over it in the beginning. So instead, ask, what, what, what do you guys need? Anything you need, let me know, and I'll take care of it. And, and obviously, don't be a you know person who does everything. But you see what I'm saying? Get the jobs under your belt in the beginning. This is the one I want you to ask about. Do you have every client sign off on anything, any kind of terms and conditions before the start of a pressure washing job? Yeah, absolutely. We have, uh, like I'd said on the resource page, we've got the uh, customer contract, which is essentially just that. It's a customer contract. It basically outlines everything that we expect of them and it protects us from any kind of you know, potential issues down the road. And we do, we provide that to every single customer <coughs> When we provide the estimate uh, within Quote IQ, we're a lot, we're able to uh, drop that in uh, in our settings section, and then it pre-populates every estimate with your customer contract. We also have a little section if you don't have a contract, uh, if you haven't got it from us yet on you know on the resource page, uh, you there's a section where you can put in terms and conditions of your own as well. But I would definitely recommend having something that has been prepared by an attorney, so you know that you're covered and it's not just uh, you know just a way to paper and time and space. Right. And the other thing we set up with Thinkquote IQ is whenever a customer accepts a job, they must write their name out completely. So that way 
um, in order to accept it fully and in order for you to schedule it. So uh, that's another little thing that we put in there as well. But yes, we have contracts in place. we got terms and conditions that make it super easy with Inquote IQ. It just puts it right into the estimate. It's right on there. They must sign their name in order to um, accept the job. And um, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We like to make it so that it's there, but it's not like in their face. We're not popping the contract right up in front of them and, and flashing the pages. It's kind of like whenever Apple puts in front of you, like you agree to these terms and conditions and you check the box and you roll with it, you know? Um, if we don't have steady clients, the trailer won't make us money. Uh, if we don't have steady clients, then buying a $10,000 setup is not worth it to start out. So, um, what do you think, Mike? Well, I think I think Sean has got uh, a, a valid point to some degree. Um, if you are in it to win it, if you are going to make the investment in yourself, if you are serious about what you're doing, then yes, uh, and you have the funds to go ahead and invest in, in the right equipment, then absolutely. You might not have the lead flow immediately, but when, you know, you and hopefully you're, you've been working on that as well. Uh, it, I would rather have the right equipment at the beginning than having to try to play catch up. So if you have the funds and the ability to do it and you trust in yourself, you trust in the fact that you are going to commit to this, you're going to put in the work, uh, and in this, like I've said a million times, there is nothing easy about this. There are no magic bullets. We are not selling uh, the idea that you're just going to start and you are going to um, all of a sudden be making as much money as you know somebody that's been in it longer. That's just not how it happens. Unless you take the things that you learn, you implement those things and you execute then, then it's, it's a no brainer. Then absolutely spend $20,000 because you're going to recoup that investment. Yep. And then different strokes for different folks, right? Like you might not have as much money as somebody else to invest in the beginning. Well, I think this comment was back when we were talking about people purchasing the trailer. We were talking about max efficiency here. So you can think a guy who's carrying around a two and a half gallon a minute unit around the yard from Home Depot versus somebody who pulls up with a $10,000 trailer. How many more jobs a day are you going to be able to get accomplished? How much faster are you going to be able to get to that $1,000 a day? That was really the messaging behind like get the trailer if you're looking to maximize efficiency. Right. Um, We'll keep it pushing though. Let's see what else we got on here. <laughs> My parents are making me get a job or get clients to pressure wash. It's tough, man. We'll just head up, keep hustling, consistency and repetition. Is it feasible to run a lawn care and pressure washing business with equal flow? I don't know what equal flow means, but um, I, I think I think he understands. I understand. Is it possible? Of course it's possible. But then like, w are you the pressure washing guy or are you the lawn care guy? Are you going to set aside three days a week to do lawn care and, you know, two or three days a week to do pressure washing? You don't want to over promise to either segment and then under deliver because then you lose credibility. So I think it's very important that you find your focus. Um, but like myself, I had a lawn care business and I had a pressure washing business, both very successful, but I had employees that were out there doing it. So they were two separate entities. But if you're an owner operator, I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do both, right? Yeah. Just like a lawn care guy, um, he can do tree removal. He can do snow removal. He can do uh, bed installations and lighting and irrigation. But is that going to, is that going to interrupt his, his main source of income? And, and upset those customers. So I think it's a balancing act. Is it possible? Yes. As long as you're not overextending and under, under delivering. Well, beautiful. Um, what linear foot, what linear foot pricing within quote IQ? <laughs> well, he was asking what NLF pricing is. So linear uh... foot NLF is linear foot pricing. So it's from point A to point B, right? Square foot pricing is from point A to point B to point C, you know, so it's a box or any kind of shape that's connected. That's your square foot pricing. Linear is like how you would measure a fence. Or if you're in lawn care and you're using quote IQ, it's you're, you're measuring how many linear feet of edging that you're going to do or weed eating that you're going to do so you can assess a price. So that's what linear foot pricing is. Or gutter cleaning, things of that nature. Gutter cleaning, fences, yeah. Uh, we have in, in Quote IQ, you've got multiple options on how you can price things. You can do a linear foot price. You can do a... <coughs> God, so I was in Colorado all week. High altitude um, and like my... Everything is just dry. I, so I'm coughing and I apologize. So um, 
we've got linear foot pricing. We've got square foot pricing where we also have an hourly rate. So you can put in your target hourly rate based from your cost calculator within quote IQ uh, and say, okay, it's going to take me three hours to do this. My hourly rates, $150. It's going to cost them, you know, X amount of dollars for that job. So you can quote that way. And then you can also do just a flat rate. You know, you can look at a job and say, okay, we can do all that for 600 bucks, send them a quote. So we've got all kinds of options within the, within the app. So you're able to quote a number of different ways. Should I show a mic real quick within the estimate screen? Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, sweet. So let's just hop in here real quick. So if we were to create an estimate, and then we'll create an estimate here, and then we'll just use Benny Blanco because he's right here. I love Benny Blanco. You like Benny Blanco, Mike? Yeah. So we'll save and continue. So this is essentially your services section. So right now we have it set for square footage pricing. So now we could measure Benny Blanco's house. And let's say that his house was 4,000 square feet. That's then going to multiply by our square footage price. And it's going to give us our total. The other thing that we can do is, is we can hop over here in the hourly rate calculator. And we could say, you know, we want to be making $75 an hour. We think the clean Benny's house is going to take us five hours. And so now the total is three seventy five, dollars Or... If you're like looking at Benny's house and you're saying like, oh, that's something that we would charge. Um, I don't know what I mean. That's something that we would charge five hundred dollars for. You can just enter a flat rate. So we just have multiple ways within here that you guys can quote in order to make it easier. Hence, quote IQ, right? Right. Here, pop over to the mapping feature. Okay. Because I always think this is really cool. So within the app, you're able to go in and uh, it's just kind of, it's, it's, it's like uh, Google Maps, but better actually. It's more up to date. We've got better satellites up in the, uh, in the, uh, in the atmosphere. In the sky, than, yeah. Than Google. We've actually launched our own satellites like Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. It's They're called cool. quote IQ lights. So you can go in and you can measure all kinds of different things, whether it's, you know, if you're in the lawn care world, you can measure grass, um, beds. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just measuring. Oh, I'm just measuring this building. Keep going, Mike. Yeah, but no. So it's just, uh, it's just a great tool. So this is going to be able to give you your your square footage. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, I just wanted to kind of show. And I'm just kind of playing around here with this, but um, if you were taking your time and kind of dial it in, I like it better on the phone, honestly. Um, I do too. Well, we're just lot. used to it on the phone. I'm just going to close this out so you guys can see it real quick. Oh, oh, that did not close it. Okay, we'll come back. If you can erase points too, if you don't. Here, kill that comment too, because it, we can't see the square footage and all that. Oh, is it in the way? Okay, hold on. Yeah. So you guys can see the perimeters here. I'm probably not close enough to the point. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm having an issue here. I can't close this out. Um, Okay, so technically you would close this out and you'd be able to get a, the exact square footage price. For some reason, I can't though. So we'll have the developer take a look and at it. And I this. apologize, guys. Next time I'll do it because I'm better yeah, at this. Mike is better at it than I am. So, but you want it, you got to hit it right on the end of it. Let's try to pull it down. Yeah, I don't know why. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, we're going to fix that. Um, anyway, you can measure things with it, it's really good, uh, typically. I'm really glad that we showed everybody this. <laughs> this was just a bad example. <laughs> a horrible okay. example. Let's keep going through the uh, the questions. Any tips on mixing bleach on surfactant <laughs> on surfaces, surfactants and bleach on roofs, just a bit on the house? What in the world? Clean yes, area. get how to wash. If you're asking these questions and you're trying to start a business and form an LLC, then you definitely want to get how to wash. It It goes over every chemical ratio, how to get to those chemical ratios for every surface on a residential property. And then there's also a section about an LLC because I put a little business section in there as well. Um, and so, but your question is how easily it is to make an LLC. It's, it's unbelievably easy. You get online and you can go to your uh, secretary of state and uh, start there. Start there. The other thing is, if you need help with like what your mixes are, you can come in here to the mix calculator. We put this in here so that way, if you know what your um, concentration is, so you guys can see common ratio percentages here at the bottom. So vinyl is one to two percent. So if we said that we want like a one and a half percent mix, and we were dealing with twelve percent SH, and we had a five gallon bucket, it'll then tell us exactly um, what we need as far as 
4.4 gallons of water to 0.6 gallons of SH. So if you need help dialing in your formulas, if you're doing some batch mixing, um, the app has that built into it. And we also put a downstream in there too. So you're easily able to uh, figure out what your injector is throwing up on the side of a house. <laughs> oh, I think this is a good one. I did a driveway that I charged 185 for, yet the customer then says afterward that I said it was going to be $100, not 185 She settled in the middle and gave me $125. How should I deal with customers like this? Well, you should get quote IQ and send a formal estimate that they have to agree upon and check off. And then you've got a document that is legally binding. And if she doesn't want to pay you, then you can threaten the contractor's lien based on the document uh, that you have saved in quote IQ. And you're all set. But that sucks, man. I hate that for you. Absolutely. No. So how? I mean, we're we we don't have a two way call here with with old Austin, but if um, you know, like, did you text her? Like, have it written somewhere, whether it's an email or a text. Even if you give her a verbal one, just say, "Hey, I'm also going to shoot you an email with the estimate." This is just one of those live and learn situations. But dude, Austin, you're 17, but quote IQ is free, so go use it, and you can also, you know, that's just, it's just a no brainer. What about invoices when starting out? Would you recommend go with the CRM immediately or print simple paper copies to start? <laughs> Quote IQ is free. For Quote IQ invoice for free. And you send estimates and you collect payments. And you can you enter all of your customer it. contact information. You can send estimates. You can send invoices and you can collect payments. But then you've got uh, the, a digital format that they can print if they want. Don't waste your time printing stuff. Nobody wants printed papers. Uh, just say, hey, I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to text you your invoice and then they can, they can, they can get it. And if you, you know, I don't know who William is or anything about that, but like if you've got a checking account, which I hope most everybody does. And, uh, I would say, um, I would say uh, connect everything that way you can get paid right there by your customer. Okay. Let's see. I'm trying to find if we have any other good comments before we wrap any advice on obtaining my first client and how much for the course. <laughs> Well, we've got a bunch of different courses. How to wash is $3.99. How to get customers is $3.99. We've got a bunch of them. You can check them out at pwcourse.com. But I'll give you guys a promo code. Use 50 free. And uh, that'll take $50 off anything, any of the courses there. So you guys can definitely use that. Uh, advice for obtaining your first client. I mean, we've kind of gone over that a bunch yeah. in just all of our marketing. So implement the marketing strategies, door to door, you know, long-term and short-term strategies, uh, asking friends and family, all, all of those things, leveraging those relationships to, to generate those first couple customers and door to door, like go door to door. My senior estimator would like to know if quote IQ will implement a form to build packages. <laughs> yes. We have packages and options coming probably within the next few days. The next few days. It should very, really very be cool. like, Yeah, it should be very soon. And we'll go live and we'll show you guys what it looks like. Um, is Ohio a good region to start a pressure washing business? I, I, we have a lot of people from Ohio in the inner circle when they do. I've never been well. to Ohio before. I heard it's cold there. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see if we got anything else. Restaurant work is hard, but it pays. Where can I find dilution ratios for different services? Quote IQ. Quote IQ. We just showed you the form. If you get a, wait, let me share it one time. So if you go to Quote IQ, you go into the mix calculator. If you see that percentages, we have literally a list of uh, what percentage. Move that custom, that, that Francisco's. Common ratio percentages at the bottom. And we have every single ratio for every single service. Maybe not every single service, but a lot right. of different. And those, those are recommendations. You know, some surfaces are going to be dirtier. It's going to take a higher concentration, but these are all things that you can learn. Uh. We wash cars with Southeast soft wash soap. Don't tell dad. <laughs> hey, I know that kid. Do you really? Do those are? Oh, the car wash twins. <laughs> What's That's up, boys? Uh, hey, shouldn't you guys be in your corner uh, anodizing um, long range? Or, uh, That's right. It tips? should be. Oh, we got another super chat that I missed. Mike Davis. What's up, fellas? Uh, where's oh. Southeast and Lena Mina at? They'll be on with us uh, another time. Next week, we'll uh, hop on with them. You remember Mike Davis? Yeah, Mike Davis, I remember. What's up, brother? Hope you're doing well. Why y'all making videos if y'all are uh, making so much money washing? Um, Wait, who who said that? That's what Mike Davis said. Oh, that was right. Uh, I don't know. See, I was about to get all riled up again. (laughs) He is, he is. Um, Does a premium quote IQ package allow you to have a business website link? I'm not sure what that means. 
If it yeah. doesn't, it's coming. I think I think I know what he's talking about. <laughs> what? A form fill out? No, I don't think that's what he meant. Uh, Jamari, ex- try to explain a little bit better. Mm, and this is pretty much our last question. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Would paying for a professional resident agent group be better than choosing yourself or setting up an LLC? I set up all my LLCs through attorneys because I want it done right. But yeah, I mean, you can do it. Mike likes to do things himself. No, I I use um, <coughs> excuse me. I've got multiple LLCs. Some of them that were set through attorneys. Others were set through LegalZoom, which are attorneys, um, and that's a pretty quick and efficient way to do it. And then you can also expedite things uh, through either your personal attorney or through you know somebody that does LLCs like LegalZoom. Um, and you know, they charge a little bit extra for the expediting, but it's not an, it's not an incredibly expensive process. Mike, maybe we could wrap on this question. Do you guys still wash at all? So do you want to tell them how you started your business? <coughs> yeah. So I, uh, 21 years ago, I purchased an existing pressure washing business from a friend and he was like myself. He was not, um, out there washing. He was a business professional and he had started this business, uh, for his father and, or his, I guess it was his dad. And then it kind of expanded and grew from there. And they were, I've talked about it in the past. Uh, when, when I purchased it, they were grossing $46,000 a year, uh, which, which is in my opinion, horrible. Uh, but I saw the huge potential of, uh, this type of business, uh, because everywhere I go, I look around and I think to myself, everything's dirty. And every single human that I see is a potential customer. And because of that, I thought this was a no brainer. Um, and so I bought a business, I had employees, uh, and I have never washed. I know how to wash. I can go out there and I can train with, um, every single one of my employees ever. Uh, have I never washed? No. When, you know, when, when, it is needed. I will be out there and I will, you know, uh, get bleach in my eyes and, and sweat and bleed with the guys. Uh, but, uh, I don't wash on a daily basis. I am a business owner and that's what I do. Um, but with all that being said, when you've been doing it this long, when you've built every single piece of equipment with the exception of our new Southeast soft wash trailer, um, I mean, I've, I've built everything. I've wired everything. I've plumbed everything since day one. Uh, the equipment that came with the business was was not good. And uh, I saw that efficiency was so important. And that's when I started that. So I have I am the prime example of who I don't want you guys to be. I did it the hard way. I wanted to learn everything myself. I didn't look for help from anybody. While I was doing this, there was a few internet forums that were out there, mostly pretty negative places um, that, you know, there was definitely some helpful helpful information uh, that can be found out there. There's a lot more now these days, a lot more people that are willing to share and not just kind of like keep everything so close to the vest because they think they've got some kind of secrets. There are no secrets. Um, So... I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, I don't wash. Never have, never will. But Excellent. Um, last question. How do you wash a house? I'm curious. That's a <laughs> this great is question. Jorge. <laughs> this is Jorge. All right, sweet. Uh, Todd, catch out. We'll give one more shout out. Great video, gentlemen. I can't wait uh, to get my equipment from Southeast Soft Wash and get to work. Dude, I thought Todd got his – I thought Todd was getting his equipment already. Todd went to uh, WashCon. <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, look, there's Dewey. God, there was a him. bunch of stuff that we. A lot of. Do you want to answer some more questions, Mike? Uh, it's one eleven. We'll go for like three more minutes. Let me see if I can find some. Go wash something so you know how much it takes. That's a good. Sean is just a negative guy. Sean is probably one of the guys that is like, I'll never pay anybody to learn anything. And, and th- go wash something so you know how much it takes. How many gallons of chems you use and how much they can cost per gallon? What the fuck kind of question is that? Like a guy like this just is, is just a negative human. Um, uh, here's a go. Oh, $500 in less than four hours today. I can't wait to hit that $1,000 a day mark. t Uh Is there an industry standard in regards to the deposit amount I should have clients pay to book a job? As a contractor, I would get... 30% up front for material cost is that where I should be. Now, <coughs> in my opinion, and, and in my business, residential wise, we have never asked for a deposit ever. I think I think it looks desperate. I think it looks like you 
should like a, a business, a business that is a legitimate business doesn't need a deposit for, you know, a $500 job or even a thousand dollar job or a $2,000 job, right? Like they're, they're really the minimal, the costs are minimal. Uh, you've got some bleach, you've got some gas, you've got your labor. I would never pay a deposit for a service. It's just, I just wouldn't. Now, if you were going to put in a pool, then yeah, I'm going to pay you. If you're going to install an HVAC system, yeah, I'll give you a deposit, right? I understand that. But for something like we're doing, I wouldn't do it. I just think it's a bad look. I know a lot of people do do it, maybe to lock in the customer so they don't cancel. I've been doing this a really long time and I've never had a, a problem where, you know, we've showed up and, and, you know, somebody's like, oh, I don't want you to come here. Maybe, you know, I can count it on one hand how many times that's happened in 20 plus years. So I probably wouldn't, I, I don't know if there's an industry standard. I don't think there is because I don't think most people ask for a deposit on just regular jobs. But within Quote IQ, we do give you the opportunity to ask for a um, ask for a uh, deposit. And in order for the customer to accept the quote, they have to pay the deposit. So, you know, it's in there. We put that in there mostly for commercial work because that's more, you know, more in line with higher ticket. And I mean, Mike, you've done some massive jobs. Like you've done some like hundred thousand dollar jobs before. Like there was no deposit required for a job like that, right? No, I'm. But if it's not you're a lot just, of material cost though either. So right, if you're just starting out and you somehow land a thirty thousand dollar job or something like that, right? And you know that you're going to be allocating a tremendous amount of time to that job. Time is the most valuable thing that we have, right? So, in my opinion, if You've got, say, a job that's going to take you seven days or 15 days, whatever the case is, and you know you're going to allocate all resources to that job and you're not going to be able to do any other jobs that probably will pay you a lot quicker, right? Then ask for a deposit. Get a 20%, a 25%, a 30% deposit, whatever you can get, <coughs> excuse me. And then that way you're covering all of all of those uh, you know missed opportunities for the quick turnaround payments, right? And that way you're not you're not waiting for that check. And on a job that big, it's probably going to be 30 days out at the minimum. And so if you're a small business, you're just starting out, you probably don't have the cash flow to get you from point A to 14 days later where you've got no income coming in. So then a deposit, I think, is a great thing. But that's not going to happen on residential jobs. You're not going to have a seven-day or a 14-day residential job that I can think of. Absolutely. Uh, I want to answer this one. Does Quote IQ allow you to upload your contract? Yes, it does. If you come into the Settings tab in the sidebar, um, you can click on Estimate Terms and Conditions. And then I have multiple in here just because I play around with it. But then you can select Add. And then you can upload your document or you can do a custom terms and conditions. So if you didn't have, um, you know, like Aaron's contract, for instance, or the one that we provide on the resource page, you could name it whatever you want, you know, lawn care. And then you could just type in whatever you want here as the body of it. And then once you save it within the estimating process, there's a place that you can input it. Should we just show them real quick, Mike? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just show you. I'm going to open up an old estimate. So let's open this one up. So let's go back to Benny Blanco. Let's say we were doing a house wash for Benny for five fifty. We'll click next. This is going to allow us to edit it. So we can do any custom service descriptions that we want to. We can add tax or we can take it off, which I'm just going to take it off for now. And then you can come into your terms and conditions and then I can attach any terms and conditions that I want to. So for this one, we'll just put in pressure washing contract, save, and then proceed, and then there you go. Then you got your company information, everything, and then you got your terms and conditions. Click here to view terms and conditions. So um, that's as easy as it is. That's how easy it is. You attach your contract through the settings, as I mentioned, and then once you're in the estimate, you click terms and conditions, and you can actually save this as a default. So if you just have one in here, you can select it, save it as default, and then every time you go in to create an estimate, it'll always have the terms and conditions attached, so you only have to do it once. Good job, Justin. Thank you. Oh, look, Mike gave us another super chat. Yeah, yeah, and I saw that. Um, <clears throat> Ten grand to invest, uh, garbage bin cleaning. I, I, I think, I, a, that's awesome that you're uh, you're gonna do that for your son. I think, uh, kudos to you, and and he's lucky to have you as a father. Um, garbage bin cleaning can be very, very uh, profitable. I know that there have been, um, you know, a, a, an influx of 
of people getting into that and the equipment that's that's out there is is pretty impressive i don't know how much it costs i've personally not looked into it but i think 10 grand to get started uh is you know justin you can probably talk a little bit more intelligently on this because you have done some bin cleaning in the past but like right now they've got like i just saw a trailer the other day that had a piece of equipment that grabs like two cans and then lifts it up puts it behind rinses everything out and you know <coughs> excuse me but um the cool thing about a bin cleaning business is I would advise this, like if you wanted to, I mean, a lot of people will have water reclamation um, issues with it, but you could have a sludge sucker and fix that. I'm actually going to do a live with Cody about water reclamation, but you get a two and a half gallon a minute unit pressure washer. You could operate it out of the back of your truck. All you got to do is connect the hose to the house and then you spray down whatever cans they have, rinse them out, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And you might be out a few hundred bucks rather than anything near 10 grand. Um, right. The other thing is like Mike Terman, he's one of our uh, big earners in the inner circle. I mean, he's got a huge business up in New Jersey um, and he does bin cleaning and he's got these relationships with like waste management where, you know, they basically say, okay, this is the route that we're doing today. And then he rolls up right behind them and washes the bins after they've been emptied. So it's super efficient. He just follows the route and he, you know, basically following that money. Um, it's, it's a good business. Sweet. Let's wrap on that one. You guys, Mike, what's the word of the day? <laughs> um, just however you're feeling, it could be Lincoln cause your shirt has Abe Lincoln and you want to show me real Lincoln. quick. Yeah, yeah, this is my son gave this to me. Ford's Theater, one star, awful, would not recommend. How funny is that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of a little dad joke, you know? I, I kind of like funny stuff. If you guys want to check out Quad IQ, it'll be linked in the comment section description of this video. We're giving away two MacBooks March 23rd. So if you want to win one of two MacBooks, become a premium platinum subscriber, take advantage of all the uh, tools that we have within there. Mike, word of the day? Lincoln. If you guys made this far in the video, comment down below Lincoln and I'll hashtag you a real one. Um, Todd Kachow said, follow that money. Absolutely, baby. My name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. And until next time, hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace.